All right, so let's start with the big story that we're tracking on Vion at this hour. Jimmy Xavier is a radio jockey, and he had contracted the COVID-19 infection. In his own words, he said that he had gone from giving live updates on COVID-19 and putting doctors and health officials and patients on air to lining up as being a patient himself. Now, exactly three weeks ago, Xavier's test results had come in as positive, and he later went into quarantine. He went through the entire treatment process, and now he's emerged on the other side, as, as perhaps hope for many people who are extremely scared of COVID-19, and he's joining us live on this broadcast. Jimmy, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Vyond. And let me begin by asking you this. You know, as you in, in your blog had written that you're in fact gone as a radio jockey who was talking to doctors, who was talking to patients, something like what we are doing right now here, right. to having contracted the infection yourself. So take us through your story of having lived and survived the COVID-19 infection. You know, uh, the moment you say survived, it feels like uh, there's this huge thing that happened to me. It's not dramatic at all. In fact, there's so much fear around the virus and which is why people call them survivors. But you know, the 80 to 85 percent of the people only get a really mild symptom or are asymptomatic, have no symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. So my story, okay. Uh, my mother tested positive on the 27th of March. Um, I went in for testing on the 1st of April. And, you know, of course, when I posted that I was going for uh, testing, everybody said, oh, this is an April Fool's joke, isn't it? Because it was the first <laughs> of April. Right. And I was like, no, sh shut up. I wouldn't joke about this. Uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, my wife and uh, my wife and my daughter tested negative. But because we had all been in touch with a primary uh, patient, my wife and my daughter had to go in team in a government facility which was a hotel in Whitefield uh, and I moved to Victoria Hospital for treatment. Right. Um, now the treatment is based, so there's no cure, correct? So the treatment is basically a course of three medicines. I think there's a bit of an issue with the line there. We'll, we'll try fix that with Jimmy Xavier. All right, Jimmy, I think we have you back on online. There's a bit of a disturbance in, in the line. Go on. You were telling us that you were admitted at the Victoria Hospital in Bengaluru. That's correct. Now, it takes up uh, 14 hours. Uh, so, sorry, uh, they give you medicines for five days. And it's a, and three medicines for five days. And that's the entire course. That's it. After that, your body has to heal. So basically, you're looking at the body's immune and for that, you have to eat really well, drink a lots and lots of water, and rest for really long periods of time so your body can do its work. Mm -hmm. Right. So five days of medicines that were given to you. There is no cure at this point of time. So these, these are medicines which essentially treat the symptoms. Uh, now, Jimmy, uh, you know, another question that I would like to ask you is, from where do you think you and perhaps your mother, who I, I believe is still... COVID-19 positive, where, where do you think you may have contracted this infection? Had you recently traveled? Okay, so my mother is not COVID-19 positive. She tested negative uh, right. two weeks later. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry? Go on. Had you recently traveled and, abroad? But she's undergoing treatment still because... No, no. So, uh, which is which is why it's strange. Uh, uh, my wife, my daughter both tested negative. My uh, mother tested positive, and then after that, I tested positive. So we don't really know where the virus came from. Uh, yeah, it's it's baffled many many people. And also, you know, uh, a question that a lot of people would want to know is during this journey of yours, at the time when you tested positive. You were at the Victoria Hospital for the treatment. What symptoms did you exhibit? So I had a fever. So the day after my mother test, my mother went in for the test. I test. I mean, I had a fever the next day, and the fever was in the range of 9900. But I was taking paracetamol to keep it down, and uh, it lasted for about nine days. The thing is, by the time I went to Victoria Hospital, the testing and everything had done. The day I entered Victoria Hospital, that day my symptoms were, were over. I mean, it's, we, I had no symptoms post that. But the funny thing is that uh, when I was in Victoria Hospital, there were close to 41 patients in the hospital at the same time that I was. 
and none of them uh, had any symptoms whatsoever. Mm. No fever, nothing. They were completely asymptomatic, but they had contracted the virus. You know, a lot of people also at this point of time, because there is a lot of fear about COVID-19. People are scared of contracting this infection. They don't know what would happen to them. Uh, you know, in this journey, you've said that you had fever, you went to the hospital, but once you were at the hospital, after that day, there were no symptoms. Uh, tell us about what your experience was like when you were put under quarantine. Okay, so here's the thing, okay, uh, what I want people to understand is that there is nothing scary about this virus. 85% of people will only get a mild flu-like symptom, so it's not a scary disease. Mm -hmm. What what it is, is an inconvenient disease. And I think that's the new, that's the narrative that needs to go out, that it is an inconvenient disease. Because if you are taken for testing, if you test negative, you're sent into quarantine for 14 days in a government facility. So they've taken over some hotels and stuff like that, and you go there for 14 days. It will be a minimum of 15 days before you come back home. All right? right. That's one part of it, if you test negative. If you test positive, you go into a hospital for treatment, into a government hospital for treatment. Now, I was in Victoria Hospital, and I have to tell you that we were in a general ward. So it's not like you get separate rooms. Right. You're in a general ward. The beds are kept at, a, at the social distancing norms that are required. And the doctors and nurses were fabulous. You know, the entire team over there, they took so much care of us, led by their core team over there. It was fabulous. Uh, they kept the wards really clean. Uh, the toilets, though they were common toilets, were kept as clean as possible in the situation. Uh, you have to also understand that the doctors and the nurses coming there are in personal protective equipment, which means that once they put it on, they can't take it off for six hours. So they're in it for six hours, no food, no water, no drink, sweating profusely inside, and no going to the toilets as well, right? So the kind of work that they've put in is just amazing. It's astounding. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of the testing process, what happens is that from the day, if you're positive, from mm -hmm. the day one that your test has been taken, 14 days later, they test you again. There are two tests in the span of 24 hours, right? Right. So uh, on day 15, there's one test, day 16, there's one test. Both tests need to be negative for you to be discharged. However, if either one of them is positive, then you wait for 48 hours and then the process is repeated. Until you get two negative tests, you remain in the hospital and only after your two negative tests are you discharged. So my first two tests, my retests in that sense, on day 15 and day 16, mm -hmm. one of them came positive. So I had to wait for 48 hours, do two more tests. Those came negative and then I got discharged. All right. And, you know, uh, this, this, of course, is a story of hope and it's a story that a lot of people do need to listen to, especially when there is this climate of fear. And just before and I let you go, uh, Jimmy, is there any message that you'd like to give out to everyone who's listening to you right now? as to okay. what they should actually be doing. Right. So whatever you've been doing right now, continue doing. Uh, so social distancing, extremely important. Why is that important? The lockdown does not cure the virus. What it does, it slows down the spread. This virus is going to spread. That is our reality, right? The numbers are going to increase and it's going to happen. There is, there is no uh, denying that. There is no fighting that. What the lockdown does, the social distancing does, is slow down the spread of the virus so that so many patients don't land up at the hospital and then the doctors can't treat you. Right. Right. So that's why social distancing is so important. They say flattening the curve. What that means is that the virus spread is slowed down. It doesn't peak. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's important. In terms of what you do personally, uh, be really careful about touching common surfaces. Be aware if you've touched a common surface outside that before you touch your face, you sanitize and sanitize your hands because that's how this virus gets transmitted via surfaces. So try and stay away from common surfaces, which is what will really help. And the washing of the hands or the sanitizing ever so often is really, really important. The other thing mm -hmm. is don't panic because Absolutely. this... You know, the number of messages that I got saying, oh, my God, are you OK? I think you're going to die. I'm like, no, no, you're not going to die. 
you know, uh, everybody who gets this virus is not going to fall critically ill. Only 3% of the people who actually get the virus have to go into and go into an ICU or ventilator, right? 85% of the people will only have really mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. Absolutely. You know? And uh, 5% maybe will need to uh, get some kind of extra attention, which is like maybe an oxygen mask to help you, right? But Absolutely. that's about it. And I think that's really important. And the other thing is, if you are, if you have any doubt whatsoever, mm -hmm. and you think that you are going to be tested, so you can't go and get a test done by yourself, right? So don't mm -hmm. run away to a hospital at the, uh, at, at the sign of a fever, or a sign of a cough, because the chances are if you go to a testing center, they're not going to test you until you fulfill some certain criteria. And the chances are you'll go there without the virus, but come back with it. That's a point. So, so don't run away to a testing center at the first sign of a fever. Check with your general physician and your general physician will, if required, then direct you to go to a center. And keep, if you think, if they take you for testing, be very sure that you will be away for 14 days minimum. So pack a bag. You know, I think that's, that's an important message that, that you are putting out. Please consult your general physician first before you head out to a hospital. Thank you very much indeed, Jimmy Savior, for talking to us and sharing you. your story with all our viewers. Because this, in this time of fear, anxiety, where there's also a certain stigma that's attached to COVID-19 infection, the message that needs to go out, and that is important that it goes out, is that please do not panic. 80, 85 percent of the people do not even feel the symptoms and only about two to three percent of the people may actually get these severe symptoms which would require hospitalization. Thank you very Absolutely. much indeed, Jamie Xavier. Pleasure. Pleasure.